What if events went differently in Avengers 2012? What if Tony Stark was mind controlled by Loki? What would have happened? What would have changed? Find out in today's highly anticipated Marvel's What If. Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to a brand new episode, and I'm really excited to finally dive deep into this highly requested What If. This was a What If that was requested so long ago, and it really intrigued me as Iron Man is one of the most important characters in Avengers 2012. And seeing him being mind controlled by Loki right before the nuke goes off and all hell breaks loose, this would be such a crazy Marvel's what if. So that's why I'm here today to finally do it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Location Stark's Laboratory, Stark Tower. Tony Stark was perplexed. Evidently, Loki was winning. He knew he couldn't let Loki win. That would not rub off quite well on his reputation. He had to win. But then, how did he get here? Having to bargain with Loki, the god of mischief. Of course he was Tony Stark, the most nerdy Avenger. Surely Loki had to be a nightmare. Loki asked him another question. Tony could feel a bed of sweat trickle down his backside. Even in the tight Iron Man suit, he knew Loki observed this. The wry smile on his face indicated that he did. He had to answer Loki's riddle. If he failed once more, then there was no telling what Loki would do. Tony sincerely hoped that Thor would return just in time to save him. He was the god of mischief. Of course, he knew that. Loki's questions nagged at his mind. He had no answers. Loki's smile grew wider. He knew he had beaten Tony to the game. Tony didn't look so pleased at it. And then again, the great Stark had no answers to a riddle. As common as that, Loki sculpted. Of course, every child in Asgard knows the answer to this riddle, Loki continued. This was mockery. Stark saw his chance. He had to intimidate Loki. The mischief man must be stopped in his tracks. Tony picked up his iron gloves and looked at them for a long time. Loki observed him quietly. He seemed to know what was coming. For one, Loki seemed to be ahead of Stark, and he didn't like that. Tony threatened to blast Loki into space. Loki countered with this, and the experiment lab, which belonged to Tony Stark, was littered with test tubes and scientific equipment. Loki knew what all those were for, and the little chemical boilings just under the table. He knew what they were. Tony would try to intimidate him, he guessed. Tony put on his iron gloves. The machine made three beeps and came to life. He looked at the glove menacingly, then at Loki. He made the threat again. Loki sculpted it a second time. A ring of white, blinding light followed Tony Stark, running straight at Loki. Reflexing, Loki disappeared behind Tony Stark. Loki knew one thing for sure. Stark had no patience. Therefore, to wear him out, one gas to exercise patience. Tony Stark tried to blast Loki, but Loki kept evading at every attempt. Loki proceeded to ask, the great Tony, Avenger now, a man of violence, what next? Burn the world with all the people in it. To this, Tony sent another blast after Loki. The effect was intended. Loki could not evade this one. He took the blast full and was sent crashing into the shelves filled with scientific equipment. Loki was lying there still for a span of two minutes, waiting for Tony Stark to approach him. To this, 
Stark did. How did we do, Loki? Tony Stark asked as he bent over to take a look at Loki. Now he had his chance. With swiftness of a deer, Loki got up and in one graceful moment made three magical taps in the air, revealing his camouflage staff. Before Tony Stark could realize that, Loki had already used it to gain control of his mind. Tony's arc reactor was useless against this powerful Asgardian staff. Loki was already in his mind, crippled with fear and hearing multiple voices in his head. Tony Stark fell to the ground with a heavy thud. Selvik's armies were growing impatiently. Earth's invasion, for them, would not work out if the portal did not open. They had to invade Earth. Selvik was working very hard to open the portal. If it didn't, they were sure to lose this war against the Avengers. In one last attempt, the portal finally held a ray of hope. Behind Selvik, the crimson sun glowed a deep pink blue. The portal was about to open with renewed hope. Selvik resumes the, the portal opening ritual. Great and mighty, showing us the way to Earth. Selvik said in a loud voice. The soldiers vibrated in the rhythm of the one battle chant. The Earth vibrated, their feet as the portal coughed into life. Salvik finally gave the final command and the portal slowly opened like an eagle spreading its wings in anticipation of flight, began to open itself allowing the armies to pass through to earth. Salvik slowly drew back the hood, looking with greedy eyes the passage to earth. This was it, there was no turning back now. The Jatari army was sure to destroy everything in its wake. Woe has come upon Earth and upon the Avengers. Tony Stark raised his head. The pain shot through his neck like a morphine jab. He tried to recall what had happened earlier in his lab. Instead, the more he tried, the lesser he recalled. He tried to get up slowly. The room was littered with broken equipment and tubes. He grabbed the table as he struggled to get up. The pain itched on his face was enough to tell that he was in pain, and the voices in his head would not go away. No matter how hard he tried not to listen to it, the more he tried to forget, the louder the voices became. He felt for his reactor. It was broken. That was unusual. He removed it and tried to fix it. The voices wouldn't leave his head. The voices kept calling his name and Tony grabbed his head tightly. The voice was growing louder. Stop, he yelled at nothing in particular. The voice chuckled. Tony tried desperately to fix his reactor, ignoring the voice in his head. He knew the reactor would make them stop, so he had to. Nonetheless, Loki made other plans. Tony tried in vain. But now, Loki had full control over his mind. Tony, in pain, bowed his head down and grasped the table tightly, trying very hard not to scream in pain and frustration. Tony's vibrations stopped as he lifted his face up. Deep in his brown eyes were Loki's blue crystal eyes. Tony Stark was gone as his eyes shifted to black. All of what was left of him was his body. His mind was being occupied by Loki. The goal was simple, destroy the Avengers. However, before Loki took over Tony's mind, Tony had used the opportunity to send a message to somebody, somebody that he believed could help. Location, Earth. The invasion occurred. The Jatari army left nothing alive in their wake. On and on, they killed everybody as they moved with lightning speed across Earth's globe in search of the Avengers. Destroying all and leaving none was what was declared by Selvik. They had to obey. Nobody could make a stand against the Jatari army. People retreated into caves and crevices in order to hide. Location, 
Stark Tower. Pepper Potts had received a strange transmission from Tony. To this extent, she had come here hoping to be able to help out. To her annoyance, when she saw Tony, he disregarded her. Pepper immediately felt like something was wrong. She could feel it. Rogers looked far away, towards the horizon. The setting sun was lucky to go away and hide its face from the bloodshed it had seen. The radar beeped loudly and threatened to blow up due to the pressure it had taken. Nothing could have prepared the Avengers for this. Assemble everyone, he called into the microphone. High level threat, I repeat, high level threat was what he called next. Thor felt for his hammer, Mjolnir, and curled his hand around it. Fury had warned about the invasion of Earth by the Jatari army. Now here it was. There could have been none other responsible for this but Loki and Salvik. He should have kept Loki locked up in Asgard when he had the chance. Rogers called to Tony, and Tony Stark looked at Rogers. None of the Avengers knew he had been possessed by Loki. The Jatari army kept coming in large numbers. Hawkeye forced himself into the room. He had been running for hours, trying to save those that he could. Hawkeye asked if anyone had been able to reach Fury. Looking at the nervous faces of Steve and Tony, Rogers shook his head, and with a sign, Clint admitted that they might be doomed. Steve proceeded to ask Clint what the evaluation was, to which Clint responded, millions, as he dropped his bow and arrow on the large central table. Stark Tower was a fortress with weapons that could hold out for several weeks, but the Avengers knew it would be one day to fall. Clint's estimation of millions of Datari soldiers were accurate. Two million Datarians swept across landscapes like waves of an ocean. This army had to be stopped. Steve, the super soldier, made by Stark himself, knew that in order to stop the mischievous Loki and his Jatari army, they would have to work as a team. And working as a team meant that they had to put aside their differences and fight the Jatari army with their superpowers. Steve Rogers had to address them. He looked at the divulged Tony. His reactor was cracked, but it was glowing fine. He looked fine. He looked at Thor, the impatient Asgardian Prince of Thunder, then at Dr. Bruce Banner, the Hulk. Hawkeye looked fine. He had killed hundreds of soldiers of the Jatari before he made it to Stark Tower. They were ready for what was to come. Steve talked to them. Bruce was trying hard to locate Selvik and Loki. The plan was simple, capture their leader and force a surrender. Since Stark was corrupted, he didn't give out the location of Loki, and Stark sat there and just listened to Steve without asking a single question. The Jatari army was almost upon them. A big battle would ensue again. Hawkeye looked menacingly at Stark, and all he knew, Stark was the most intuitive of all of them. If he could be silent at this time, then there was something really wrong. He only hoped that the Iron Man would be in a good frame to fight. Bruce was busy with the heat radar. He could pick up Dr. Selvik, but not Loki. Anytime he tried, the radar would go blank. Mischievous Loki, he thought. He must be at his tricks again. Loki would pose no serious threat, as Thor, his brother, would handle him perfectly well. The Asgardian system of justice was much more efficient than that of Earth. Tony Stark spoke up for the first time since he sat where he was. The plan will work only if we work together, Tony noted. At that moment, Steve nodded, agreeing with him. Stark stood up and he began to don his Iron Man suit. This suit was especially designed by him for a battle situation. This was one, he had to use it well, and this was his chance. Loki's chance to destroy the Avengers, and Loki's intentions were never genius, 
He wanted total control of Earth and everything in it. Such assumptions were what S.H.I.E.L.D. did not understand. Thor looked at Tony. He asked if Stark was alright. His Asgardian accent was plain in his English. Tony nodded in the affirmative, but deep down Stark knew that he wasn't right. He had been possessed by Loki. He was to bring doom upon the Avengers from the inside out, to implode them. Hawkeye bursted into the room. He noted that they had to leave immediately. Steve quickly urged them to remember the plan. As he spoke about Loki, Thor noted that he would be able to handle him himself. Swinging his hammer in a threatening manner, Tony Stark was almost phased by Thor's behavior. The Avengers all rushed outside of Stark Tower. This was it. The Jatari army was approaching quickly. The Avengers stood their ground and waited patiently. Banner was gently calling to the Hulk. It was time. He showed his green colors. And when the Hulk would finally come, he would beat these aliens into submission. That he knew would happen. The Hulk could be an unpredictable monster at times. Once, when he had gotten into a fight with Thor, the Asgardian prince had lost woefully. The earth beneath Rogers' feet reverberated with the sound of a fast approaching army. A large unrestrained army. Tony Stark pointed his hand skywards, and it was about to begin. That he knew, the fight would be a bloodied one, and the Avengers might die. People would die. Hawkeye was ready. His bow was bent skywards in a manner that would send his arrows descending on the army. Rogers removed his shield from his back. This was it. Thor's hammer was ready for battle. The Norsemen could feel it. He was one with the hammer, and the hammer had chosen him. Since then, the hammer had not to let go of him. The shrieks of this alien army was unsettling enough. The Avengers drew a battle line. Hold steady, Steve called. They waited for them to approach the Stark Tower. The Avengers could only count on Pepper Potts to do a good job on firing the missiles at the Jatari. They were getting closer now. Closer still, a little left. Now, Steve bellowed. Iron Man quickly plummeted into the sky, leaving a huge cloud of dust in his wake. Hawkeye needed no further telling. His arrows infused with explosives scattered a legion of Jatari. Steve ran into the throng of soldiers that came at him. The battle had begun. Legions of Zatari ran towards Steve. Hulk was doing a good job of smashing a group of them into oblivion. The Black Widow held the tower with pepper pots. So far, the army had stayed off of the tower. Not because they did not want to, but because the tower itself was electrically wired to keep the Jatari from getting any closer to its walls. During the fight, Iron Man sped off. He had to find Selvik. Loki's mind control had been stalled for a while. For the first time in hours, he felt like himself. He was fighting the voices in his head, and the voices in his head had disappeared. Now he could think as he blasted away a group of Jatari soldiers, trying to gain access to the roof of the tower, where Pepper Potts and Black Widow were. Surely, they could not be allowed to take the tower. It would signal the end of the war for the Avengers, and their defeat. The technology contained in the tower could not be let into the wrong hands, hands like Loki and Selvik. Selvik looked at the sky, hours had passed since, and they had invaded Earth, yet no good news from the front commanders. He felt the best was yet to come. If everything went according to plan, then Loki must have possessed Stark by now. He was the wild card that they hoped to use, when it was too tough and the Avengers were unbreakable. There was a darkness in Tony's head. The voices had returned. Losing his consciousness, he plummeted to the ground like a little bird shot by an archer. His mind went blank and dark. 
Everything in his head was a hazy blue. Steve caught sight of Tony in the distance. Falling out of the sky, he, could, he called to the Hulk to help Tony. Hawkeye disappeared. Hawkeye disposed of a few Jataris before looking up. Hulk stomped and took a look. He was the only person close to the falling Tony. He had to help. Using the door of a car, he hit it another. Using a door to the car, using the door of a car, he hit it another. Using the door of a car, he hit another. Who had tried to jump on his back. He roared and ran towards the falling Tony. Location, Stark's mind. There was silence, then a bright burning light. Tony had to shield his eyes from it. Everything was dark. He could hear nothing, but the same voices were plagued in his mind that entire day. He looked around. He could see no one. Had the battle been over? Had they won? These questions kept nagging at his mind. He did not understand why he would be there at that time. He had to get back the battle and help finish saving the earth. A figure rushed past him. He gasped and turned. He looked at his clothes. Here, he was just Tony. He was not Iron Man. He had no power here. The figure rushed past again. A voice immediately called his name at once. He recognized the voice. Loki. It is time, Loki said again in the darkness. Tony held his head and covered his ears trying to free himself from the mind control. His efforts were useless against the god of mischief. This was a place where nothing worked. Loki was in complete and total control. It is time to destroy the Avengers, Loki said. Hulk had a big task of looking after Tony. He had to. He was pretty much their leader. At the present, Tony was unconscious and needed to be protected from the invading army. Steve was running towards them. He had to help. A lone soldier knocked Steve out. Hulk bellowed at him. Now, he was alone with Stark. The Hulk touched his wrist. He felt his pulse. The iron gloves had blocked them. Hulk tried to tear them off. Suddenly, in the chaos and confusion of the invasion, Stark opened his eyes. The Hulk was surprised at such a sudden recovery. He looked closer at the Iron Man. Something was not right with him. He could tell. Even in his metamorphosis form, Stark was not himself. The Hulk helped him up. He looked into his eyes. Tony looked around for a brief period. The invasion continued and the Hulk swept at a dozen soldiers that had made their way to them. Then, the Hulk proceeded to ask Stark for help. However, his request fell on deaf ears. Green blood gushed out of the Hulk's open stomach like a rushing river. Stark smiled at him. He had killed the Hulk. Steve was rousing himself when he saw this happen. How could it have been possible? It was already too late. His head hurt badly too. His vision became blurry from the blow he had received, but he had seen Stark kill Bruce. Hawkeye fired three arrows at Stark. All of them had no effect on his suit. As the Hulk was falling to the floor, he became Bruce Banner. Shock and surprise was itched on his dying face. Steve rushed at Tony Stark and tried to fight him. The Jatari took no notice of this happening, and Hawkeye, in one swift move, tried to defeat another Jatari group with explosive arrows and ran towards the tower with 15 Jataris in his hot pursuit. He knew Stark was possessed, and in essence, they were screwed. The ensuing fight was brief and fatal for Steve. Tony had his iron gloves on, and the energy was too much for Steve's shield. As Tony Stark used his arc reactor and blasted him, Steve deflected. This went on till both men ran into each other head on. Steve realized at that point that Tony was possessed by Loki. 
Steve immediately called out to Thor as he endured several punches that would have been very fatal to any other man. Another one fell on his chest, a third on his chin. Thor looked up from where he stood, just in time to see Tony on top of Steve. Thor, knowing immediately who was at work, grunted and threw his hammer into the midst of dozens of soldiers coming at him. Stark had his lasers to Steve's throat when Mjolnir hit him hard from behind. The hammer hadn't fallen to the ground and Thor caught it and, with every bit of energy left within him, sent it back at Iron Man, who had quickly rosed himself from the deadly blow, which his suit had mitigated through a crack on it. In the next few minutes, Pepper Potts and Black Widow arrived. It was now that Pepper understood why Tony had sent her a message. He must have sent the message when he was getting possessed by the God of Mischief. Tony was being restrained by Thor and Steve when Pepper arrived. Pepper immediately signaled the two men to leave Tony alone. In spite of their reservations, they listened to her. She approached Tony with so much compassion in her eyes. Tony was weak, but he could recognize the woman in front of him. Pepper immediately urged that Tony fight Loki with all of his might. Everyone needed him. She needed him. This was enough motivation for Tony to finally snap out of Loki's mind control. Tony opened his eyes. He looked at Steve and his eyes told them he wasn't in control of anything that had transpired between them. He turned to look at Pepper Potts and smiled. She smiled back, a tear dropping on his face. Steve immediately noted that they needed to find Loki. They had to get him to end this war, once and for all. However, no one had an idea on how to get to Loki. As they all pondered, a weakened Tony noted that he had a plan. Tony would have to use his mental connection to Loki to find him and defeat him. However, Thor was against the idea. Tony's arc reactor was beginning to die in its intensity. Tony would die. Thor warned. Tony agreed to these terms. The horror of Pepper and the others. He felt sorry for killing Bruce Banner, and now he had to amend it. He shut his eyes tight and heaved a heavy sign. He knew Loki was there. He had not left yet. Location, Tony Stark's mind. Tony felt the life drain out of him, like water going out of a sleeve as he tried to get rid of Loki. The God of Mischief was not difficult to find, as Tony located the mental version of Loki. Loki proceeded to question Stark. If he got the answer correctly, Loki would have to leave his mind. Loki asked, What is the most sought after thing by both rich and poor, young and old? Tony did not hesitate. With his eyes shut, he muttered, Peace of mind. And with that, Tony blasted the mental version of Loki with all the power he could muster. Turns out, Loki was in the Stark Tower the entire time. As Tony had defeated the mental version of him, Loki materialized again, extremely weakened and tired. In seconds, Thor had flown into the building, and he had a look to kill. Thor immediately sculpted that the council at Asgard awaited Loki. Then, he sent his right fist towards Loki's face and broke his staff. The invasion was over, but several million losses had retreated and were forced out of Earth by the Avengers. Earth was free, however the Avengers were now gathered around the dead body of Tony. Both Tony and Bruce Banner were dead now. The Avengers had become heroes, saviors of planet Earth. Within this timeline, some of the events had unfolded differently. With the nuke not going off, and with the Avengers just being able to shut the portal down. Yet, they had chosen to avoid TV and journalism, and remained an underground society. 
only to assemble when Earth needed them most. Just like what Nick Fury wanted. They owed the peace they now had to Bruce Banner and to Tony Stark, who had died to save them all. I'll return to the military, Steve said, as he put his shield away. To Asia, I'll go, Clint said with a smile. Mexico for me, Natasha said, as she put on her boots. She had some unfinished business to attend to. Thor had already decided to leave to Asgard. He had a lot to do in his realm, as he feared that somebody might be going after the Infinity Stones, after Thor had a vision. Pepper Potts remained at the Stark Tower. She could not leave. She would protect Iron Man's legacy, the Stark legacy that was now given to her. She looked through the glass window to see a bright and peaceful world. A world where Tony Stark sacrificed his life to protect everybody. And that is going to be, what if Iron Man was mind controlled by Loki in Avengers 2012? Now, I do hope that you guys enjoyed this insane Marvel's What If video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I do want to say, do make sure, if you guys did enjoy this video, to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. I also do want to say, if you guys would like to join the Thick Talk podcast, where, you know, we're doing episodes weekly, uh, do let us know because we're actually looking for some people to, you know, have conversations with. So if you guys want to join in, do make sure to send us a message in the comments and also send us a DM on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, do make sure to follow my Instagram, my, tw my Twitter, my Reddit, everywhere in between so that you don't miss any of the latest updates. You don't want to miss that. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff on Instagram where you get to see a lot of different things that are coming to light on the YouTube channel. And if you would, and if you would like to see a breakdown video of this Marvel's What If, do let me know because I will be addressing all of your comments in the description down below. So if you have questions about this particular storyline, I will be featuring you and shouting you out within that video. So I challenge you to send your comments in and do make sure to share with your friends because it really goes a long way. We're trying to reach as many people as we can here and I cannot thank you enough for the support on this channel. It really does mean a lot. But that being said, my fellow watchers, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you in the next video. Have an amazing day. Peace out.